Welcome to Looking at Legal Stuff. Today we have a series of six plea agreements and pretrial motions, including drug charges, a guy who says he was forced to steal a U-Haul truck as repayment for a loan, another who says he was too busy working to do his probation, and an adult woman who assaulted a pregnant woman when she didn't like any of the groceries her parents brought home for her. Let's see what the judge thinks. There's no application. No, no. All right. The court is calling 2023 CR 9277, State of Texas versus Christian Torres Lugo. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Uh, Jason Garahan, Your Honor. Defense? Attorney Bill Simmons for defense. All right. Are you Mr. Lugo? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have you received all the discovery and did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Lugo, I'm showing you what's entitled True Bill of Indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you, you waive the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, we are, Your Mr. Lugo, I'm going to show you what's entitled Court Admonishments and Defendants Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of robbery? Excuse me. So people are in the box. If you want to speak to your clients, we're on the record. You have to move them down to the other end. Otherwise, it interferes with the court reporter. All right, you're charged with the offense of robbery. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court doesn't follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering this plea bargain agreement you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, ma'am. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? In my opinion, he does, Your Honor. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? In my opinion, he is and was, Your Honor. Mr. Lugo, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, ma'am. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial? Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that uh, page with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, punishments be assessed at two years in the prison. There's a $2,500 fine. State will take in consideration JN2141171. There's to be restitution to Shane, S H A N E Gilbert, G I L B E R T. And cause number JN2141171. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense, is that the plea? Yes, Your Honor. State, is that the plea? It is, Your Honor. I'm going to show you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, are there any such motions? No, Your Honor. Then to the offense's charge, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State any evidence? Yes, Your Honor. State exhibit number one with all of its attachments. No objection. All right. You may continue to confer. Thank you, Judge. Showing you what's entitled wavering consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony? Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that the defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right. Uh, state. Yes, sure. So in this case, is the complainant aware? Uh, 
of the plea? I haven't talked to the complainant and I, uh, my advocate has reached out, but we haven't uh, talked to them. Okay, so that. you've actually, you've reached out to them though. Yes. Okay, all right. I wanted to be sure of that. Yes. All right. The court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? We would just respectfully ask the court to follow the plea agreement. All right. Who is Candace Lee Morales to you? That's um, my, my child's mother. <laughs> All right. The court will find you guilty, sentence you to two years in the prison, give you credit for any time served, taking consideration JN2141171. There's to be restitution of Shane Gilbert and JN number 2141171. There's a $2,500 fine, time and money to run concurrent. There's to be no contact with Candace, C A N D A C E, Lee Morales. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. It's your if we may, and that was a slant off, we thought that there was no contact with the alleged victim, but we would ask the court to consider a no harm for or injurious contact order, given that that's, that's, that's the uh, mother of his child. All right, so here's the thing, Mr. Torres, I read the police report. It appears that you probably should not be having contact with her. You understand? Yes, ma'am. And the reason why is they're both involved in this, and he has a child with her. And obviously he's not a good influence on the child and she's allowing him to be around a child that he's not a, a good influence on. It's not good to commit robberies with the mother of your child. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm showing you what's entitled trial court certification of it's, the, it's, yes. Just one other question, Your Honor, for his clarification, but the duration, would that be for the duration of the term? Yes. Okay, so in other words, but I will tell you what's gonna end up happening. If you're paroled, they're going to have a no contact order in place. And honestly, you know yourself better than I do, better than your attorney does. Here you are with a tattoo. Is that a tattoo of AK-47 on your forehead or something? Yes, ma'am. All right. So you know better than I do whether or not you're in a good a good influence on your child. How old is your child? Two and three. All right. Uh, two and one. They're about to be. All right. They're two and one. Boys or girls? Boys. All right. They're two boys. Would you want them to look up to you as you are now no ma'am do you want your two-year-old or soon to be one-year-old getting a tattoo or ak-47 on them no ma'am all right you're not a good influence for the children the best thing for you to do is one when you get out of prison try to have them remove that ak-47 and the other tattoos that are associated with gang life or associated with violence and then get a job get your education and be somebody that's a positive influence in your son's life. Because otherwise, you know, children learn to speak. You know how they learn to speak? From listening to people around them talk. That's how they learn to speak. So when you see children who are using profanity, you know why they're using profanity? Because the adults around them using profanity. And it goes the same way with actions. If children see people being violent, they learn. Oh, this is natural. This is normal. We're supposed to be violent. If people see you with a tattoo, your children see you with a tattoo of an AK-47 on your forehead, guess what your children start thinking? Well, this is normal. This is natural. I should get a tattoo of an AK-47 on my forehead. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. It, did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, because you waive your right to appeal. You do not have the court's permission to appeal because this is a felony conviction. You're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question of what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. We can go off the record. So what possessed you to get a tattoo of an AK-47 on your forehead? Why do you have the angel of death uh, tattoo? What's going on in your wall? I was young. I got, I got these face tattoos when I was like 15. Oh, my gosh. Okay. All right. So what are you planning on doing when you get out of prison? Going to work construction. I have a, uh, when I was uh, younger, I got a, I went to trade school for construction. All right. So here's the thing. You're going to have to start doing better. Otherwise you're going to end in and out of somebody's jail, in and out of somebody's prison, 
two years is a long time. I personally think one day is a long time as well. Do not go to that prison and get institutionalized. You understand? Yeah. All right, good luck to you, okay? Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Alberto Soto. All right. I'll return to you. All right, thank you. Jordan Summers. All right. Probation, this is an application. Court is calling 2023 CR 6579, State of Texas versus Jordan Summers. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason Garahan, Your Honor. Defense. Flynn, name of the defense. And are you Ms. Summers? Yes, ma'am. Counselor, have you received all the discovery in this case and did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Ms. Summers, did you review and sign a document entitled Application for Community Supervision with your attorney? Yes, did sir. you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled True Bill of Indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? We do. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? No, Your Honor, we're waiving count one, proceeding on count two with enhancement. And you're going on the enhancement? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, Your Honor, sir. Oh, no problem. Any objection to the waivers? No, Your Honor. Ms. Summers, I'm showing you what's entitled Court Admonishments and Defendant's Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Okay. And count one, you're charged with the offense of possession of controlled substance penalty group one, one gram to four grams. That's a third degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. If the state is able to prove up the enhancement, your range of punishment will be two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering this plea, you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes. Do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? In my opinion, yes. Do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? In my opinion, yes. Ms. Summers, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? Off the record. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all need to move to this end. If you want to talk to your client, you need to move to this end. All right, Ms. Summers, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? No, ma'am. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, ma'am. Satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, state is proceeding on count two. You agree that you've been previously convicted of a felony for purposes of enhancement. Yes, Punishments be assessed at 10 years in the prison. There's a $1,500 fine. State recommends community supervision. They're taking in consideration six, I'm sorry, night mag number six, eight, two, seven, two, nine, seven, three, seven, four, seven, eight. There's to be restitution to live oak for drug testing and to complainants and night mag numbers six, eight, two, seven, two, nine, seven, three, seven, four, seven, eight. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? It is, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving the right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Outside the agreement, state is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of 10 years. There'll be a TAP evaluation, 250 hours community service restitution, no contact with the complainants and night mag number six, eight, two, seven, two, nine, 
and 787478. Did you understand those were recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, then to the offenses charged in count two, how do you plea? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Guilty. And to the enhancement paragraph, which reads, and it is further presented in and to said court that before the commission of the offense alleged above on March 6, 2020 and cause number 2015 CR 11078 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant was convicted of the felony of possession of a controlled substance, penalty group one, one gram to four grams. How do you plea? True or not true? True. State any evidence. Yes, Your Honor. State exhibit number one with all those attachments. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. You may continue to confer. Thank you. Going to show you what's entitled wavering consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did yes. you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross examine and confront any witnesses the state will call and the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports? But most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and review the same. All right. After reviewing states exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. And also the court will find the enhancement true based upon your plea of true and based upon states exhibits one and attachments. Is there anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Yeah, I've spoken to my client. She's currently um, has got a job. She's in, in my opinion, the right frame of mind to complete this probation successfully, given the tools. She understands that she needs some tools and a little bit of help. And we're just going to have to court the commander of the probation um, as, as we agree to. All right, who is Cody Ring? That is an old friend from a few years ago. I don't All right. Associate with them. And where do you work? I, I mean, well, be, what do you do? I'm a PCA at Northeast Baptist Hospital. What do you do there? Um, I'm a patient care associate, so I take vitals and uh, pretty much clean up after the patients. Um, specialize in nursing, and it's in the emergency. Room, so it's a progressive care unit is where I'm at, where I'm located. So. All right, if you're drug tested today and know you're going to be drug tested today, what are the results going to be? So dirty. dirty for what? Nothing. All right, so I'm going to tell you what I have a problem with. And I think you already know. We did discuss the possibility. Mm -hmm. All right, because people who are using drugs really shouldn't be care caring for vulnerable people. And I guarantee you, anybody who loves their relative, if they you, knew you were using meth, they would not want you taking care of them, be it drawing blood or anything of that nature. So she can't work there. She Good. needs to get a job. I mean, is she telling that company, hey, I'm currently using drugs? Of, of course not, Judge. But we would the court consider um, doing um, zero tolerance drug tests? Now, I mean, she's been working there three months and they've kept her on and she does have a history. So they hired her and it is a very decent job. But do they know that she's currently using drugs? Because the problem is if she's using drugs and there are patients there that need drugs, then she could potentially end up taking their drugs. I'm not saying that that's what's happening, but people need to stop hiring people to be home health care providers, draw people's blood and do all of this when they have all of these things in their past and they're still doing the same thing. So her history, obviously she's a repeater, which means she's been to prison for drugs. And now she's coming out and she's picking up another drug case and she's currently using drugs. Did you just come from work? No, ma'am. I'm going, I'm going to work. Yeah, but not anymore. So... Yeah. And we did discuss the possibility 
the board. All right. Do you have any children? No, ma'am. All right. Who do you live with? My aunt. Okay. I mean, once she became, comes clean and sober, the court will reconsider things. But I'm sure maybe that company needed somebody and they were taking a chance on her. But my role, I feel like my role, part of it is protecting the community. And I can't in good conscience have you being in the position that you're in with vulnerable people and you're using. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when's the last time you used meth? Well, this weekend, the other one that just passed, probably was Saturday. All right, it'll be more than Saturday if it's still in your system. Other than meth, are you using anything else? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, All right. Yes. So would you would you consider allowing her to go and speak to her employee? Maybe take a, a week off or have a clean drug test. And maybe they'll give her a week off to continue the position. Oh, I mean, I can't, routinely I can't trust her. that. I mean, if they want to come in and say, we know that she's using meth. We know A, B, and C. I'll consider it, but I'm not inclined to grant it because somebody has to protect the vulnerable people in society. So, I mean, you can't use meth and take care of people. You can't use meth and take care of elderly people because they're vulnerable. You can't use meth and take care of children because they're vulnerable. All right, so this is what the court is gonna do. Court is going to sentence you to 10 years in prison, suspended and probated for 10 years. And if you start doing well on probation, I can always consider different things. But wherever you work, they need to be given a heads up and given a true rendition of where, where you are in your life. You understand? So there's going to be a $1,500 fine. That will be probated. Proof of employment within 30 days and your client was wait, late for court today. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Take in consideration NIMAG number 6827297374478. There's to be restitution, if any, to Live Oak for drug testing. If you feel like they're asking for too much for that, we can have a hearing on it. And restitution, if any, and cause numbers, NITMAG number 682729-737478. Uh, we can do a TAP eval while out of custody. Whatever the TAP evaluation recommends, we're gonna start with intensive outpatient treatment. And we can do a referral to felony drug court. They have a wait list, but maybe they're going to do a graduation soon. There is to be no contact with Cody King and the complainants and nightmag numbers 6827297374478. There's to be 250 hours of community service restitution. The court will not waive those hours. You need to do those hours. Field visits, one time per month until she's in treatment. And then thereafter, it'll be at probation's discretion. There's to be regular random UAs. And I'm going to want 90 sober meetings in 90 days. Probation, is there anything else she needs? Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we can go off the record. Ms. Summers, I'm not trying to be cruel or mean to you by saying you can't work in that field. But if you think about it honestly, if you had your aunt or some relative that you loved 
you wouldn't want somebody who's using to be taking care of them, right? All right, good luck to you. Thank you. What sides are ready on IU whenever the court is? Jose Sanchez. And then after that, it will, we'll take care of Borrego, Norma. Yep. Yes, I already put in the motion. All right, so where are we on this case? Your Honor, um, we're here for um, two purposes now. The first one is subpoenas and witnesses. We were trying to get to the bottom of some answers regarding a videotape. But before we go there, my client wants to, uh, has asked me to let, you know, he wants to renew his request for a new attorney. So I told him I would let him go. I had put in a motion. All right, let me ask you this. Is your counsel hired or appointed? He's appointed. All right, are you going to hire an attorney? I'm trying to. Well, I mean, I asked him, I, it's because every time I ask him to do something, he does the exact opposite. I asked him back in September to please get me my bond reinstated mm -hmm. so I could bond out and pay for a lawyer. Mm -hmm. And he never did it. All right. So let me explain something to you about the, the state of legal services, right? For some reason, attorneys, people think they can do an attorney's job, even though they didn't go to school to be an attorney. And the reason why I say this, listen, you have two ears. So listen, the reason why I say this is because people think that all attorneys do is talk, which we do, to, attorneys do talk a lot. But behind that conversation is a lot of education that they've had to get. <laughs> and when you compare us to doctors who are doing surgery, you never see a patient going to their doctor if they need heart surgery and telling their doctor, you know what, I know this is the way you say you're gonna do the surgery, but I want you to do the incision this way. You know why they don't do that? Because, hey, I'm not a doctor, I don't know how to do incisions. But for some reason, people who have attorneys think that they're an attorney and they wanna file a bunch of motions, don't know what the motions mean because you may file one motion, but there are other things that go with that motion. It's sort of like when people read the Bible and they say, oh, I know the Bible. And they don't realize what you've read in the first book, there is something that goes with that that's in the second book. And you have to combine all of that. So if your attorney hasn't filed a motion, it's probably because you don't need that motion filed. I used to always get, you haven't filed my discovery motions. Where are my discovery motions? And I'm like, state has to turn that over what I'm following a motion and the state is going to say, oh yeah, we turned that over. So that's where we are. And where we are is you're indigent. This is the attorney that has been appointed to you. And what I can tell you about attorneys appointed to represent people, there are certain qualifications that they have to have in order to represent people on certain cases. This is a felon in possession of a firearm. What I can tell you, your attorney is qualified to handle this type of case Otherwise, he would not be appointed to this case. So if you wanted another attorney, you need to retain another attorney, period. Court is not appointing you another attorney. This will be your attorney. If you speak to the him, great. If you don't speak to him, you will probably end up in jury trial with an attorney you have not spoken to. It's completely up to you. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. And as a client, you have control over certain things, whether or not you want to go to a jury trial or not whether or not you want to testify, whether or not you want to accept a plea, you are not in control of trial strategy. And trial stra strategy is similar to that doctor that wants to do a heart surgery and you're trying to tell them, well, this is the way you should do the heart surgery. That's similar to trial strategy and you're not control over control over that because you don't have the degree and the experience to do it. You understand? Yes, I'm understanding. All right, so where are we? Your Honor, um, we are, are back on a uh, issue, a discovery issue. And just briefly to summarize, there was a video and audio from the Alamo Heights uh, Police Department. Originally, we asked for it and it said it didn't exist. Um, eventually, we subpoenaed Alamo Heights in. They were not able to answer the court's simple questions as to yes. um, when the video was destroyed, what is the policy, are the videos 30 days, 60 days? Um, I have anecdotal evidence that it's six months, but anyway, that's not on the record. So they gave us four names for Barcom. Barcom is a company, local company that is their IT company. Mm -hmm. um, 
as the point of contact who could answer all those questions. So I subpoenaed, um, but they couldn't tell us who there. So I subpoenaed everybody and then they contacted me yesterday. I said, I don't wanna cause any disruptions. I just want somebody, can you tell me if there's somebody there who can answer these questions? Um, there isn't, uh, they, they just sent somebody today by my, uh, I made an agreement with them to release everybody. They sent their CEO, he's here to testify. He's not going to be able to answer the court's questions. What he told me was, and he's back there. Uh, in well, let's the bring him up. Yes. Let's find out who, who can answer these questions. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? Well, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great. It's uh, Friday Eve. <laughs> it feels that way. Yeah. All right. So there are specific questions. I remember this case that are needed to be answered. Do you know who can answer these questions? Who do we need here to answer these questions? The, the people who set it up. Uh, it's a company by the name of Big State. They are the ones who installed the, the camera system. They would have configured how long uh, each of the cameras would overwrite, kind of like a VHS video, right? There's only so much space. Yes. And how often each one of those would be overwritten, would, be, would have been set up by them. Our job is to, uh, here, we're users of the camera system. Yes. We turn into the people that can go in and pull video, um make, get the software on computers to access the video but we don't manage it it's, again it's it's a it's a it, it's right, a gray so area right like a, like a do you have information that you can impart to the state and defense about who they need to contact so we can find out one if the video was destroyed two when it would have been destroyed and three what is the time frame that videos are allowed to remain before it's purged or destroyed okay uh, I, I don't like to use the word destroyed because well, destroyed purged. Implies, uh, yeah, purged know, is purged. a much better word yeah. we'll use purge yeah, yeah we'll use purge uh, just to because destroyed implies like see whenever like, yeah. I, no whenever i think of purge i think of the movie so that's why yeah. i don't use it but i i understand about purging yes, yes. okay so do you have information of who would have that knowledge okay, here's what i'll do is i'll go back and i'll talk to our team now that we, we didn't get first of all we didn't get enough details right we we're just asked a simple question well i can go and see if we have access to figure out what the purging uh, uh schedule is mm -hmm. for each of the cameras if i can get it we'll get it directly to them if not we will point them either way we'll point them in the direction of the people who installed okay. it and manage the system so what i want to know is sure. on this specific case with this specific defendant and they'll give you the the date he was in the location if you can tell me when that video or audio of him would have been purged okay i, I we'll, we'll do our piece yes. and then we'll and then if we need to we'll engage the uh, the third party all right is there any other question other than that that you want answered because that's the question i want answered um no there's not that's basically it judges it, it was their video if so why can't it be retrieved was it purged and if it was purged when it was purged because that answers the question of whether we should use the word purged or destroyed which comes later and that's okay. Right. So I, they I, they want to know. We'll we'll use the word purge. It's okay, fine. that's fair. No, no, I, I'm I wasn't going there. If you don't mind, I, I, what we'll do is uh, I'll, I'll go back and look at the dates. I don't know when the first request was, and and then we have to work back from that date. Not from, oh, before uh, they leave here today, they're going to give you the dates when the defense counsel requested it. Okay, they're going to give you the date when he was in the facility, and then I want to know one. Is the audio or video still available? I'm sure it's not. Right. If it's not available, I want to know the date it was purged. Okay. Uh, All right. Sure. So, so how long do you think that will take? Um, a couple of days. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, from our part, unless we need to engage the third party, I don't have any control over how, how no, no, no. they are. I just want to keep this on the docket. So you say in a couple of days. For, for my piece. For if, we piece. Can, if we can get the information. It'll be a couple of days that we need to engage a third party. Then it's a little out of my control unless we can get some of the uh, you know, some push from the from the court. All right. So what we'll do, Norma, are we able to set this for December fourteenth? Is that enough time for your part? Yes. Yes. All right. So what we'll do is we'll set it for December fourteenth. Okay. Um, how far do I take this? Like, and then I'm asking this. If I if my answer is here, we can't get it, and I have that in a couple of days, and I let. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know who uh, defense no. Yes. Then we can move this up and I, I might need some help pushing the uh the third party venture. Sure. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the way I got pulled in here. If you well, I, I say let's build bridges, you know, I, I let's not cross the, the bridge until it's built. So what we'll do if we're, we're gonna set it for December 14th. 
if you have your information sooner than December 14th, just let the defense and the state know and we'll come back sooner than that. Perfect. Now, here's my other question. If he can't make it down here and he has the information, are you all okay with him appearing by Zoom or do y'all want him to be here? No, Zoom is fine, Your Honor. We're trying to work with them around their schedule. Okay. So if you are not able to come into court, if we need you, you can appear by Zoom if you want to. That's That's easy. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate you're solving problems today. Thank you. Have a good day. All right, you two. They're going to give you the information. Yes. All right. So we're going to come back on December fourteenth, and if we can come back sooner, we will come back sooner. Just let the court know. So we'll be back on December fourteenth. Okay. Three nine three four. Yes. Is that the people? All right. And yes, that's correct. All right. Court is calling two thousand twenty three CR. 3934 and 2023 CR4112, State of Texas versus Ernest Morales. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar for the State of Texas. Annie Thapa is for the defense judge. All right. And are you Mr. Morales? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And taking your plea, we discovered that you were not a U.S. citizen. Is there any motions from the defense? Uh, yes, Your Honor. We, um, we would like the court to um, to withdraw the plea on the felon possession of firearm, cause number 2023CR4112. 20, and I believe the state is um, not opposed. Uh, state's not opposed, Judge. All right. And you're no, you're not opposed to being a more our motion, correct? Uh, no, Your Honor. All right. The court will grant the uh, motion to withdraw. And as both parties know, if someone is not a citizen and they have not been advised on the consequences of their plea, then a withdrawal is what is needed. And so I will grant the motion to withdraw in that case. Now, next we move on to 2023 CR3934. Are you all proceeding with the plea in that cause number? Yes, Your Honor. All right, counsel, have you received all the discovery in that case? I believe the no contest plea was already entered, correct? That's correct, Judge. All right, and count two was waived. And according to the plea bargain agreement, the state is silent on his application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Judge. Any objections? No. And have you had a chance to speak with an immigration attorney on behalf of Mr. Morales? Yes, Judge. Um, Sarah May is here. She's present in the courtroom as well. Um, and she's also submitted to me um, a Padilla letter um, that um, that admonishes Mr. Morales on his immigration consequences. And if the court wants me to go into that right now, or if the court wants me to go into that a little bit later, it's up to the court. All right. So with regards to the waiver and admonitions, the defendant checked the box that he is a United States citizen. So my understanding, he is not a citizen. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So then the paperwork needs to be changed. So if you all can change this and initial it, please. Yes. And what I'm going to do so that the record can be clear, I am going to re admonish him just so everything is clear. All right. So Mr. Morales, you understand that you're charged with the offense of theft, $30,000 to $150,000 of a vehicle? Yes, Your Honor. All right, that's a third degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you have a plea bargain agreement with the state, the court does not have to follow that plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? 
Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by entering this plea you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that the court would grant your application for deferred adjudication if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked? The court could find you guilty and sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Judge. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes, I believe he does, Judge. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, I believe so. Mr. Morales, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? No, Your Honor. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, Your Honor. Satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a U.S. citizen? Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right. So, all right. Here's my question. Number one, what is your first language? Spanish. All right. Would you be more comfortable with an interpreter? No. All right. So how long have you been in the United States? Well, I was 11 years old when my mom brought me here. I'm 42. All right. Did you go to school here? Yes. All right. So are you able to communicate with me in English? Yes, Your Honor. Have you been able to understand everything? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so here's the question. Are you a U.S. citizen? No, Your Honor. All right. So, counsel, yes. has he been given the advice of an immigration attorney? Yes, Judge. So we've uh, we've talked it over with Sarah May, and I mean, if the court wants me to go into all his charges and all the deportable offense, like, I can do that, Judge. No. And, and um, you know. Well, did he have ample time to speak with Ms. May? Yes, he has. All right. Has he been advised of the consequences of entering a plea of no contest or guilty as it relates to his immigration status? Yes, Judge. Uh, did that advice include possible consequences such, such as deportation, exclusion from admission to the United States, and the denial of naturalization? That is correct, Judge. Yes. Do you believe he understands the consequences of entering a plea in this case as it relates to his immigration issues? Yes, he does. Mr. Morales, have you had ample time and opportunity to speak with an immigration attorney about your status here in the United States? Yes, Your Honor. Have you had ample time to speak to them about the consequences of entering a plea in this case as it relates to your immigration status? Yes, Your Honor. Did that uh, consequences include things such as deportation, exclusion from the United States, and the denial of naturalization? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand the consequences of entering a plea of guilty or no contest as it relates to your immigration status here in the United States? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. And then the plea bargain agreement that you've previously reached with the state will still stand. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And you understand the plea bargain agreement you reached with the state was for a cap of nine years and the state was silent on your application. Did you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. And the state is now taking it in consideration. Pause number 2023-CR4112. Did you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report, state and defense? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, Judge. Any objections to the PSI report, state or the defense? No, Your Honor. No, Any Judge. witnesses from the state or the defense? None from the state, Judge. All right, then the state is silent. The court will hear argument. Defense? Yes, Judge. Um, so my client, um, He's 42 years old. Uh, he's from Nicaragua. Um, he's got one prior um, felony conviction, and that was back in 2010. Um, it was a 39 day jail sanction for possession of controlled substance. Um, and then he had an evading arrest back in 07, where he served 100 days jail. Um, 
we are asking for probation, Judge. Um, he's only been to prison one other time. Um, we don't, he doesn't want to go to prison. Obviously, that was 13 years ago. Uh, he's 42 years old. He has three kids, uh, two of which are adulted out, and he's got an 11-year-old that's still um, underage. Uh, he does work as a roofer. He's worked most of it. Well, obviously, he's worked all of his adult life. Um, I have spoken to his boss on several occasions. He was not able to be here today, Judge. I can proffer that he would testify that he has a job rep for him because he has told me numerous times that uh, that he will give him a job because he's he's a good worker. Um, he is not a citizen. So um, we talked about that with Ms. May. Um, he has never, he has a deferred adjudication on the controlled substance charge. Um, he doesn't have a deferred adjudication on the theft charge, which is why we're applying for deferred adjudication on this uh, particular charge judge, because it significantly will impact and it'll improve his chances of not being deported if he should be granted deferred adjudication. Um, um, notwithstanding, my client um, obviously regrets what he did. Um, I don't know if you want to tell the court about what happened that day. Um, you just kind of let her know. Uh, I'll right, defer to my client. Okay, before we get to that, I don't see in the PSI report, <clears throat> excuse me, that he's ever been to prison. So has he been to it's prison? State jail. It was state jail, Judge. No, I, it doesn't even show him being yeah. to prison for a state jail. The state jail, he was placed on deferred adjudication. Then it, it said true. probation expired. So I don't see that. Ah, that one, that, that was 39 days, but not in the state jail facility because it was only 39 days. So that had to have been in the Bear County Jail. Well, but that's the only felony conviction that he has judge okay so i mean i i no 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 yeah it, it counts as a felony conviction but i just didn't see it uh, i mean yeah it was it was a short um i don't know if you were on i never i i've I never been to a prison i've been to dc state jail right. oh and like that all right you want to raise your right hand you solemnly swear affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you god yes your honor all right you can lower your hand state your name for the record Ernesto Morales. All right. Is there anything you would like to say? Yes, Your Honor. Like, to begin, like, I'm, I'm 42 years old. I got into this trouble with these people because I owed them some money. You know, I owed them like about almost $3,500. They had loaned me the money to get an apartment, you know, and get my life, you know. Well, the time came to pay them. I didn't, I didn't have the money to pay them back. You know, I would just started working back at the roofing for a living, you know. I was like forced to do what I did, you know, in order to pay that money back. What do you mean forced to do what you did? Did somebody have a gun to your head and say, hey, take the U-Haul? Yes, pretty much, pretty much. Cause I mean, I, it's not pretty much, did somebody do that? Yes. Because I owe them the money, you know, I owe them $3,500. All right, so here's the thing. If you commit an offense, I mean, I've never had this happen uh, to me, but I know from law school and from the law, if you commit an offense, I mean, not killing anyone, but if somebody pulls a gun on your head, you know, holds a gun to your head and says, hey, you better take this U-Haul, then that's a defense. That's that's pretty much so state. He's saying someone forced him to take the U-Haul. That's pretty much what happened. And so so I did it, right? And that's that was my way of paying him back the money that he had loaned me. You know, right, I tell you what, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna let you sit and talk to your attorney, all right? Because what you're telling me, I don't, I don't, I won't want this over tonight, y'all. I mean, today, well, no, no, no. Wanna... But here's the thing: I like for people to have a chance to communicate with their attorneys. You just told me that someone forced you at gunpoint to commit this offense. I want you to discuss that with your attorney because this may be the first time your attorney's hearing that. I don't know that, so just we're still here. We'll be here till twelve, but discuss that with your attorney, okay? So I'll have you step back in the box to discuss that with your attorney.
All right, y'all ready to proceed on Morales? All right, come on up. Okay. So have you had a chance to speak with your attorney? Yes, sure. All right. Anything you wish to say with regards to what he stated? Yes, Judge. Um, well, as we talked about before, um, Mr. Morales is not a U.S. citizen. And so obviously um, getting to this point, to this plea, and the reason why we are pleading to this charge versus the other charges, um, it has to do everything with his immigration status. So even if the state could prove he was, or even if we could prove that he was innocent of one, he, you know, uh, is guilty on the other one. So, um, okay. So that's our rationale. All right. For our plea bargain agreement, Judge. Because what's in the PSI report is different from what he told me. What's in the PSI report is that yes, he was struggling financially, and it's on page nine of the PSI report. He said he owed a debt to someone offered him a job to pay off his debt, which was to go steal a truck. That's different from somebody put a gun to my head and said, no, I mean, take they, this truck. That didn't really happen, you know? Like, I mean, I owed him the money, but they didn't really like, you know? All right, so why are you making me believe that somebody put a gun to your head, or at least trying to make me believe that someone put a gun to your head and said, go steal these trucks? I'm nervous, you know, to be honest with you, and I just want to ask you, like, I'm 42 years old. I have three daughters, you know, my two daughters, one day marry, you know, like, my youngest one, she's 11. She depends on me. But, I mean, you're, not, you're stealing. I, it's, just, it's wrong what I did, you know? And, and like, I mean, it's been 10 years since the last time I got in trouble. You know, I completed probation once, and... I was going to ask you, I was going to beg you. I'm willing to take 20 years probation. Oh, we don't do that. Here. I'm willing to take the monitor. I'm willing to take drug tests every day. I'm willing to take community service, NA, AA classes. I'm, uh, it, was, it was a mistake that I made, you know? No, it's not a mistake. It's choices you made. These are choices. These are not mistakes. So you made choices. You made choices to steal the U-Haul. And honestly, I'm seriously thinking about sending sending you to prison. But what I'm weighing against sending you to prison is the fact that, yes, you have a state jail felony drug case and you were given misdemeanor punishment for it. But what I'm thinking about is the fact that there's restitution that's owed. There is $1,800 owed to you to U-Haul. I'm, I'm willing to pay all that. There is... $5,100 that's owed to Shane Drake. And I know that these people want their money. I will pay all that back. No, I mean, don't make promises that you're not intending to keep. I, all right. I, I, like, that's, that's on my kid's life, Your Honor. Oh, like, no, 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 no. Don't be throwing stuff on your children's life. That is not a good look. And that's not a good sign when people say, I, I do everything on my child's life. Your child don't don't want whether you complete something or not to depend on their life because I'm sure you said when you had probation for drug cases on my child's life, I will never use again. And what I'm looking at some more possession less than a gram case. On my child's life, I will complete this possession less than a gram case. And what's what ends up happening? You really didn't complete it well. So don't come to me with on my child's life. I'm sure with this evading arrest, this misdemeanor case, on my child's life, I'll never pick up another case again. So don't come to me with on my child's life. If you want to bet on somebody's life, bet on your own life. Right. It's been 10 years, Your Honor, since the last time I got in trouble. You know when the last time I got in trouble for a criminal case? Never. Yeah. You know when the last time your attorney got in trouble for a criminal case? Never. You know when the last time he got trouble for a criminal case? Never. 
You know, the last time the deputy got in trouble for a criminal case? Never. So don't come here with me with the last time I got into trouble for a criminal case is 10 years ago. Like that's something fantastic. When you're put on this planet, all you have to do is follow the rules. Right. And it's not like you committing an offense and it's some civil disobedience or something else is going on. You're just being selfish. Right. The only, the only reason to your honor why I'm here in front of you, because these these charges are from February, right? So February, March, April. I came out on, on April, I think, on a PR bond, right? I speak me up. Immigration picked me up from here when I got released on, on April. Well, they released me an hour later, you know. Well, back then, I didn't know that when they released me, I was supposed to be poor. Back. But let's start with this. Why did immigration pick you up? Because I'm not a, a, a citizen. No, there are plenty of people who are residents. You're a resident. Yeah, I'm, I'm a so resident. So why did they pick you up? I got to get some of my charges. Yeah. So it's not like immigration just popped up and like, oh, no, no, no. Let's see who's a rep. That's why they pick you up. So don't come with. Well, I mean, I didn't know they picked me up with some of my charges, you know, because my, 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 my thing, you know, it was, it was fire, you know. But when they released me, I didn't know I was supposed to, you know, like report, you know, like they, they, they never told me, well, we're going to release you, but you still got to report back, you know. Now, now that the immigration lawyer knows here, now I know. I, let me just tell you, I really don't think you're a good candidate for probation. Counsel, if you want if you want to to bring in his employer, you're more than welcome to do that. Maybe I'll think about it, but I don't think he's a good candidate with the information I have right now. So if you want to have his employer come in to testify, we can recall this for Monday. His employer can come in. They're not gonna. They're not gonna come, Your Honor. I'll be completely honest with you. They're not. I mean, they're willing to hold me like out there when I'm out there, you know. But when it comes down to like them, you know, being all around these day, I'm I'm being completely honest with you. They they they're not gonna come. They, okay. They not. All right. So why wouldn't they come? Because they not they they don't like to be involved, you know, like in all this stuff. I mean, they will hold me if I'm out there. You know what I mean? But like to be honest with you, like 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 completely honest with you, I'm not even gonna waste your time. Or I'm not even gonna waste my time. I know for a fact they will not come. You know that's for a fact. You know. All right. This is what the court is gonna do. The court is gonna find you guilty. The court will sentence you to three years in the prison. Give you credit for any time served. Take in consideration 2023 CR 4112 2023. CR 4111. There's to be restitution to U Hall and the amount of $1,839.99. That includes uh, $179.70 for the loss of use, $11.57 fee for mileage rate, $908.54 for the tow charge, and $740.18 for repairs. Now, with regards to Shane Drake, nobody's had any contact with him. They say monetary loss of the victim resulted in this offense for him. They say $0.00. But then they're saying the amount of the item stolen is $5,141.29. And they say that those items were recovered. All right. Is there anything else from either side with regards to sentencing? No, Your Honor. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendants' rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. 
If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, we can go off the record. Mr. Mm -hmm. Morales? Just for me, if I can address the court. Sure. Um, so with respect to the, um, it'll be a conviction. Yes. Um, obviously that changes the immigration deportable offenses standards. Um, we were originally asking for a deferred adjudication um, on that particular charge mm -hmm. because it would make it less on his immigration status. Um, I don't know if the court can reconsider. No. Let us continue. I mean, he said his witnesses are not coming. Uh, no. Uh, I'm sentencing him to the three years. And I've given him less than he bargained for. So that's what I'm sentencing him to. And if you could write that in the file, Norma. All right, uh, Jose Gallegos. Hello. How you doing, ma'am? All right. Okay, I don't know why I don't have any of this in the file. Here, yes. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Mr. Gallegos, you know we have a problem, right? So why are you not showing up for anything that you're supposed to be showing up for? Um, I recently just, just, um, I, I had a second job, ma'am, mm -hmm. um, and I'm staying very, very busy with that. Um, I really don't have no time, um, except for like on Sundays. Here's the problem. I understand what you're telling me but you're on probation. Yes, and when you're on probation, there are rules. Yes. And if people don't wanna report for probation, if they don't wanna do the classes that they're supposed to do, then that means you're not really on probation. You just sign a piece of paper and you're just still doing whatever you want to do. Yes, and that cannot happen. Yes, I'm not and I'm not accepting it as true, but it appears that you have time to use illegal substances, but you don't have time to report. That's gonna stop. Yes, if you, this is us having a conversation, it's not on record. This is a compliance hearing. This is me trying to get your attention. If you continue the way you're continuing, you know what's gonna end up happening? Yes, ma'am. A warrant's gonna be issued for your arrest. You're either gonna make bond or you're not gonna make bond. If you don't make bond, we're gonna have a hearing and they're gonna bring you over from the jail dressed in orange, in which case nobody's gonna be taking care of your children. And you're not going to have employment. Yes, ma'am. So, if you drug tested today, what are the results going to be? Um, it's going to be positive. What are you going to be positive for? Cocaine. Okay. See, that's a problem. You're not doing what I'm telling you to do. Yes, you say you don't have time to do it because you're working, but you have time to use drugs. Yes, ma'am. I understand. So, who else is at home with your children other than you? Um, it's me and my wife. And is she using it as well? No. Mm -hmm. Yes. If I may, um, Mr. Gallegos and I spoke briefly before approaching, and he did um, he did express some issues that he was going through, which made him relapse. Um, there was a um, death in the family, which made him relapse, and he says that he's doing much much better now because he's keeping himself busy with the two jobs. He also indicates that um, he has a plan in place to get his DWI 
education and victim impact panel done, as well as his parenting class. He is um, scheduled to begin his intensive outpatient treatment in January. All right. This is what we're going to do. And if you do not follow this to the letter, I'm going to end up receiving information that you have not followed it and a warrant may be issued for your arrest. Do you understand? Yes. You are doing those sober meetings. Yes, ma'am. And the first one that you have is going to be today. Okay. And you're going to do one every day okay. until I tell you to stop. Yes, ma'am. And you're going to make that January 8th appointment for intensive outpatient treatment through probation. Yes, and you're going to follow through. Okay. If you don't follow through, a warrant could be issued for your arrest. Probation is should be very important. It should be right up there with taking care of your children. And let me tell you why it should be right up there with that. Because if you get revoked on this, you're looking at 10 years in prison. Yes. And then if you were to get 10 years in prison for 10 years at the most, somebody else is going to be raising your children. It's not going to be you. Yes, ma'am. Do you understand? I understand. Anything else, probation? No, Judge. All right. I'm notating in the document sheet, although I'll, I'll remember it because my mind is a steel trap, but we had this conversation. Yes, is there anything else that you need help with? No, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And probation, this is an application. All right, court is calling 2023 CR8808, State of Texas versus Jasmine Hunt. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense? Michael Collins, attorney for defendant, present, ready, Your Honor. Are you Ms. Hunt? Yes. Counsel, I'm showing you what's entitled discovery acknowledgement. Have you received all the discovery? Did you review it with your client? I have, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. <laughs> All right, off the record, I don't see the, oh, there it is, thank you. Uh, Ms. Hunt, I'm gonna show, we're on the record. Ms. Hunt, I'm gonna show you what's entitled application for deferred education or community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? Yes. Showing you the true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, yes, your honor. Counsel, do you weigh the reason of the indictment? I respectfully do, your honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Hunt, I'm going to show you what's entitled Court Admonishments and Defendant's Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions. Did you review that document with that, your attorney? Did you understand it? Okay. I'm sorry, Judge. <laughs> That's okay. Did yes, you Your sign Honor. it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of assault of a pregnant person? That's a third degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 10 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by entering this plea you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, off the record, Ms. Blake, Angela, you all need to take it to that end to speak with her on that end. All right, we're back on the record. Did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty sentence you up to 10 years in prison and up to a ten thousand dollar fine sure. yes, sure. counsel has your client been able to provide you with any defenses well, she has, sure. do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her i believe she does sure. do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense i, I do your miss hunt has anyone threatened you forced you or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea no, no, no. Anyone promise you anything other than the plea? Had, has anyone promised you anything other than what your plea bargain agreement is? 
You want to step back and just, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, sure. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, sure. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea, there's a $1,500 fine. State recommends deferred adjudication. There's restitution, if any, to Cassandra Valdez. And that's Cassandra with a K. Did you understand that to be the plea? Defense? It is, Your Honor. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. Next, I'm showing you outside the agreement, the state is requesting that your deferred adjudication be for a term of five years. There'll be a TAP evaluation, 200 hours of community service restitution, and no contact with Cassandra Valdez. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Sure. Then to the offense as charged, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? contest. State, any evidence? Yes, Your Honor, I offer State's Exhibit 1 in the attachments. I've reviewed that with my client, Your Honor. We have no questions. All right. And State, have you been in contact with the complainant? No, Your Honor, we have not. All right. All right. You may continue to confer. Thanks. Going to show you what's entitled Wavering Consent to Stipulation of Testimony and Stipulations. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent. Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one in attachments and review the same. All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding guilt as you've applied for deferred adjudication. Is there anything you'd like wish to say on behalf of your client? Your Honor, she, she's been in um, jail now for four months. She's had a long time to think about this. She's, she's, she's expressed her remorse to me about this incident. She let her emotions get the better of her, Your Honor. She knows she made a mistake and that she wants to get out and get to go back to her family and make things right, Your Honor. All right, how old are you? 21. All right. When's the last time you had employment? Um, I haven't been, I'm, I'm, I'm currently on Social Security right now. All right. What are you receiving Social Security for? Um, my disability. What is your disability? Um, I currently don't know. I think it's my depression or anxiety. Or All right. So this is the issue the court has about sentencing her today. It appears from reading the report there are some mental health issues because this is not the first time that there's been issues at the house. And the reason why I say that, because I read in the police report that they were saying that she does get aggressive and become irate. And this entire incident was over the fact that her father or either her mother went to the grocery store, brought some items, came back, and she didn't like the items that were brought back. So then the complainant tells her, I tell you what, I'll take the items and I'll go to the store and get the items that you want. And then she starts beating up the, the complainant. That's right. So I don't, there's something else going on here. I don't know if it's a mental health issue or what's going on, but I don't feel comfortable sentencing her until we have a mental health evaluation or something, because there's something else going on here. And if I send her out into the world, and it is the holidays coming up. And the reason why I bring up the holidays, because for some people, the holidays are stressors. And right now, I don't even think it's appropriate for her to go back to the home with her father and mother. So we're going to set this for a sentencing date. And that's what we will do. I, and we're going to ask, I'm going to ask for a mental health evaluation. And if you would like to see, does she have any criminal history? All I know is that she had a criminal uh, mischief as a, a juvenile and she had an assault case that was dismissed. 
All right. If you want to check also to see if she does have mental health issues, to see if mental health court will accept her. If they will accept her, you can file a motion for a new trial state. If she is accepted into the, I, I think there's, we're off the record. I think there's something else more that's going on here. If she's accepted into mental health court, will you all object to him filing the motion for a new trial? No, Judge. Is that, so that would be, um, is that like a, uh, no, ma'am. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. So that's what we will do. Norman, wh what's the date for sentencing for PSI? All right, we're going to do January 11th. And then, counsel, you need to go directly over to mental health court to see if they will accept her. And if you'll explain the situation, uh, Ms. Hunt, because it, it doesn't make any sense to the court that somebody not bringing you, an adult, the food or whatever items you wanted back from the store and you didn't like the items that they brought and you're not employed. And then you have a complainant offer to go and get you the items that you specifically want. I don't know how that turns into punching a pregnant person or beating up a pregnant person. So we're going to have to figure out what's going on. So PSI MIC evaluation will be back on January 11th. And I know that mental health court, they're probably looking at accepting people in January. So if I get their acceptance, will that... Um... Will we still be coming back on January 11th? No, if you get their acceptance and it's done before December 18th, you can come back. Or if it's done by December 18th, you can come back. Yes. Okay. And honestly, if they say, yes, we will accept her, we will get it done. Okay, I'm going to check because I, uh, I leave on vacation starting the 14th, so I will jump on it to let you in there tomorrow, Your Honor. So. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, all right, thanks. And counsel, when we come back, you'll need to fill out another trial court um, certification. Yeah, and, and, and of course, not, I, I found no competence issues, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. I understand where you're going with that. Yes. But... All right, we'll see. Because the other thing we need to discover, or you all need to discover, is her SSI. What is it related to? Is it a mental health disability or something else? All right. I can find out from the mother. All right, thank you.